SpaceX has taken Starbase's rocket-catching launch tower arms to new heights during the latest series of proof tests. In this video, we are talking about this crazy test which took place at the facility. But before that, we welcome you all to our YouTube channel. We post daily updates from the world of space. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to never miss out on any of our space videos. The process began in earnest on January 4th when SpaceX lifted, opened, and swung the tower's building-sized arms for the first time. Four days later, SpaceX performed a variation on the first round of tests, again slowly lifting the assembly up the side of the launch tower and opening and closing the arms. The most notable difference was the addition of several tandem swing tests, which hinted at more applied tests that were soon to come. SpaceX also performed some basic tests with a third Starship fueling arm higher up on the tower, very slowly swinging it towards where Starship would be standing. After lifting the arm carriage about 15 meters or 50 feet, several times higher than January 3rd's far more conservative kickoff, SpaceX fired up each arm's main hydraulic actuator and opened them about as wide as they were able to move. Unsurprisingly, the arm's first powered lateral movement happened very slowly, obviously telegraphing caution, but probably also hinting at the start of a collaboration process needed to determine their full range of motion and associate those positions with certain sensor readings or tele or telemetry to ensure they can be safely controlled. As of midnight, Central Standard Time, that testing has continued well into the night. On Sunday afternoon, a third major round of testing kicked off. This set of tests was considerably more focused than the prior two, suggesting that it was more of a simulation of the main purpose of the arms. Instead of lifting a few dozen feet and performing basic actuation and coordination tests, SpaceX simply lifted the arm assembly up along the tower's exterior and didn't stop. There were a few temporary pauses, but the arms ultimately reached the approximate height they need to reach to stack a Starship on top of a super heavy booster. In fact, despite being infamous for being partially designed to catch boosters and ships out of midair, the main purpose of the arms, and likely the only reason they exist at all, is to safely, accurately, and precisely lift, install, and stack Starships and super heavy boosters. On January 9th, SpaceX appeared to test exactly that function. Before the day's testing began, workers installed a large steel bar believed to be a weight simulator between the arms. Just like a booster would, the simulator sat, one end resting on both arms, on two small steel appendages identical to those present on all recent super heavy prototypes. On top of serving as a hard point for cranes, the downward facing end of the L-shaped structures are capped with a small steel tip designed to take the whole weight of a super heavy. Those two minuscule steel caps, each no more than a foot wide, are what SpaceX, or at least CEO Elon Musk, wants Super Heavy to land on to be caught by the launch tower's arm. More importantly, those caps, covering heavy-duty bearings, are also what the arms will grab and manipulate to carefully position Super Heavy boosters for launch, mount installation. To do so, each arm has a pair of parallel screw rods that can move together to shift the booster closer to or farther away from the launch tower or move in opposite directions to slightly rotate it. SpaceX could obviously use a giant crawler or tower crane to accomplish a similar feat, but cranes, especially large and tall ones, are extremely sensitive to wind conditions and effectively become very unsafe to operate in anything more than a brisk breeze. To put it lightly, even the average weather on the South Texas Gulf Coast is anything but conducive to the routine and, and reliability operation of giant cranes, which is exactly what SpaceX would need to avoid near future Starship launch and recovery operations being constantly delayed by weather. A handful of days later, arm testing continued, with SpaceX lifting the carriage higher than it had traveled before and demonstrating more complex longitudinal movements that required synchronized motion of both arms. On January 9th, SpaceX performed the most ambitious arm testing yet, nearly lifting the arms on top of their 460-foot tall launch tower backbone to simulate the range of vertical motion required to lift and stack Starship and Super Heavy. SpaceX also installed a temporary frame meant to simulate a Starship or Super Heavy booster, foreshadowing additional testing planned in the coming days. That jig up the stakes for the longitudinal evacuation portion of January 9th's testing, as anything less than the precise synchronized movement of both arms could have caused the heavy steel frame to fall hundreds of feet onto a range of equipment and structures directly below it. Thankfully, the arms performed well and returned to their resting position without issue. On January 11th, SpaceX proceeded to install six water bags, three to a side, on the Starship simulator frame, 
amounting to giant heavy-duty water balloons. Those bags are routinely used to stress test large structures and devices by simulating payloads that might be too expensive or inconvenient to use solely for testing purposes. With those seemingly empty bags attached, SpaceX proceeded to move the catch arms up and down the full length of the launch tower at record speed, taking about 7 minutes to climb and descend 400 feet, averaging a brisk 0.6 miles per hour or 1 km per hour. On the next day, SpaceX filled the balls with water, producing some interesting visuals. Ridiculous appearances aside, the six bags SpaceX chose to use could be 20, 35, or 50 ton variants, meaning that all six could weigh anywhere from 120 to 300 tons, 264,000 to 660,000 pounds if fully filled. In other words, perfect for simulating the dry masses of Starship, roughly 80 to 120 tons, and super heavy, 150 to 200 plus tons. SpaceX did appear to fully fill around four of the six bags and partially filled the other two, causing the whole arm structure to visibly sag during the fill process, as the weight of the ballast stretched the several inch thick steel cable holding the whole device aloft. In the late afternoon, the laden arms lifted around 10 to 20 meters and rotated left and right, partially demonstrating the process of rotating a lifted Starship or Super Heavy into position for stacking or launch mount installation. They were never lifted high enough to truly demonstrate that ability though, and were lowered back to the ground soon after. As of 10 p.m. Central Standard Time, January 12th, the water bags appear to have been fully drained after their first excursion. It's likely that load testing will continue over the next several days or weeks. SpaceX may just want to avoid leaving the arms fully loaded overnight. Part of the reason for building and scrapping so many stages is to improve the production process. The long-range goal is to develop a production line so that they can crank them out like Boeing and Airbus do for airplanes by the hundreds, so this gives them practice. The other reason is to build and test the current rocket design to find out what works and what doesn't. Then they revise the design and build the next version, which makes all the previous ones obsolete. What are your thoughts on this crazy and splendid testing? And that's all the information we have for you today. We would love to see your thoughts about these updates in the comments section down below. If you want to be updated and see more videos about Space World and SpaceX, subscribe to the Lift Off and turn on the notification feature. Let us know your thoughts. We are more than happy to hear from you. With that, we've reached the end of our video. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see you again tomorrow with more updates.